Hi, hi folks, Sensei Tony over here. That's me. I'm going to teach you a little bit of history. Well, not everybody. How about the Koreans in South Korea and some Koreans here in the United States of America? You see, these Koreans, some of them, not all of them, are always saying something to this effect about the Japanese. That they need to learn their history, the Japanese, or else their future is doomed. Yeah. So they try to teach the Japanese their history. Because apparently, according to them, the Japanese educational system is deficient. Really? I tend to think the educational system in South Korea is somewhat deficient. Allow me to explain, Sensei Tone. And I challenge anyone to find what I'm about to tell you in any current South Korean history book for elementary schools, junior high, or high school. During the Second World War, Korea was part of Japan. During the Second World War, Koreans enlisted. Oh, some were constricted, got drafted, sure, but a lot of them enlisted. And those who you normally enlisted were people of the upper echelons in Korean society. They joined the Japanese Imperial Army. Many of whom not only just joined the Japanese Imperial Army, attended military academies in Japan. Gee, how did that happen? Let's look at some of these notable Koreans who volunteered to serve and rose in the ranks of the Japanese Imperial Army. See? Isn't that nice? Then we also have these three gentlemen. They're Korean. They're Korean royalty. Princes. Prince. The three of them are. One of them was a crown prince. Well, officers in the Japanese Imperial Army. Golly gee Wilkers. Why would these notable people join a military force that was dragging women off their peninsula into sexual slavery? Can maybe that portion of history be questioned? Let's take this a little further. Then we have this mug over here, Han Saik, whatever his name is. Yeah. He rose in the ranks in the Japanese Imperial Army. Very distinguished. He rose to such distinguished rank that the Japanese Army gave him command of all the prisoner of war camps in the Philippines. So Australians, Filipinos, Americans housed in those camps. He was the supreme commander of all those camps. Hmm, really? So now the war ends, and what do you think happens to this notable person? Well, he's arrested by the Americans and held in a war crimes trial. He is convicted in 1946. He is hung for his war crimes. Gee, now what was his war crimes that they executed him? Hmm. Torture and sadistic behavior towards the prisoners in his camps. He was responsible for. Did you hear that? Australian prisoners have been reporting that the extremely sadistic guards at those camps were Korean soldiers because they had to prove their worthiness to Japanese officers by being extremely cruel towards their prisoners. So he was hung for that. A Korean in the Japanese Imperial Army hung the story doesn't end there. Let's continue with the story. 1966, his spirit is housed in Tokyo, Japan. Not anywhere at a Shinto shrine. Not any Shinto shrine. <laughs> you like the dramatics here? <laughs> his spirit was housed at the Yasukini shrine. Now let me give you a little brief background on the Yasukini shrine. It's been around since around the 1860s. Houses over two and a half million spirits war dead of the Japanese military. Whenever any notable Japanese politician goes to the shrine, the Korean government in South Korea and the communist government in China, they are critical. They file diplomatic complaints. 
How dare you go there? There's class A war criminals housed there. And that's an affront to us because of what happened to us during the Second World War. What happened to you? First of all, one of your Koreans, I'm sure there's probably more. What happened to you? How come the allied nations don't complain when the Japanese notable goes there? I don't hear any complaints out of the Philippines, Australia, New Zealand. Don't hear any complaints. Canada, the United States, who are allies during that war. No complaints. Only those that assisted Japan during that war complain. China assisted Japan? Yes. Not the national government under Chiang Kai-shek. The communist government. The communists who during the revolution, who's the government now. Had it not been for them, Chiang Kai-shek, the nationals, had a fight on two fronts, the commies and the Japanese. Had the commies not been bothering him, he'd have been able to uh, divert his forces fully to the Japanese. But forget about that. There was Chinese in the Nazi army, huh? Yeah! <laughs> the Japanese are in their country and they join an ally to the Japanese, the Nazi army. What the heck was that all about? Oh, it wasn't just them. Koreans were in the Nazi army also. It was, they weren't happy in, in assisting the Japanese to defeat the Allies. They had to assist the Nazis to defeat the Allies. There were miserable failures on both fronts. See? History. Sensei Tony. <laughs> we'll see you. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the nation you happen to be in. And God bless our good friends and trusted allies in the land of the rising sun, Niankoku, <laughs> Japan. See ya. Hope you enjoyed that history lesson, kids. Ha 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 ha.